A few weeks ago, I recorded a video on tables. If you're new to tables and you haven't seen that yet, go check it out, a little link will pop up. All right, but if you are using tables and you want to know the downsides, well, there are a few little traps or confusing things. I'm going to run through those right now. Okay, let's go. So the first trap I want to talk about is the hidden formula trap. So let's say I do a formula for first name. Okay, and I'm just going to use the text before function. I'm going to go and click on testing. Put a little space there as the separator. Press enter. Lovely. All working nicely. And the good thing about these formulas, and I think it's a good thing, is that that could be like a dummy table or a setup. And then next week you come in, you maybe sort of uh, delete these rows. Okay, right click, delete table rows. And you may come and paste some new data in here. Okay, but let's just see what happens. Okay, because there's no formula in this cell, right? It's empty. So you come in and you type something in and it grabs it. Okay, it magically reappears. All right, so if I just go back a few steps to here. Okay, but let's say I did this instead. Let's say I sort of deleted these and I deleted that one and I deleted that one, and I decided, right, I'm just going to start typing in the first name. Okay, that's ran, and this is something else. Or maybe even this formula, this column name changes. Notice this little icon, okay, inconsistent, and you go, hmm, what's going on there? And if you add something new, okay, the formula appears there, but you don't want that. It's a pretty simple fix, okay. If you want the formula to stick for every single row, then control C, control space bar, and then paste. Okay. Or if you don't want the formula anymore, control space bar, and then press delete. Okay. That'll then take care of everything. Nothing new. Okay. Nothing will show up. So that's the trick. Make sure you highlight the whole column with a control space bar or the little click hover above and click to select the whole thing. And that gets rid of the formula that's hidden in the heading. All right, next one, dragging totals and dragging formulas and things. So I, we showed you that last time. We can come into table design and we can turn on the total row. Okay, that's great. Okay. But if you control C, control V, that is not right. Because what this is doing, if I actually look in the formula, it's subtotaling that column. So the references are sort of locked. The way to get around that is you actually drag. And then the references change, which is great. Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes, because sometimes you don't want that to happen. So, for example, if I go uh, include um, for 2022, okay, I go equals if this equals yes, then grab the value from this column, otherwise blank. Okay. Okay, all good. So it's only picking up the ones where the current is yes. And then I want to do the same thing for, okay, I'll just copy paste this heading, include for 2023. I just want to drag this across. Ah, oh, no answer, because it's now saying if at 2022 hours, that bit's changed, which is what I wanted, but I wanted to, I didn't want this to change. And you can't put dollar signs in front. So what do you do? Well, this is the hardest thing I ever have to remember in Excel. In fact, to do this video, I have to look it up again because I still couldn't remember. And I've been doing this for years. So the magic trick here really, okay, is after the at, which is a bit weird, put a square bracket, okay? And then after the column reference, colon, open square bracket, 
and go and click on the same thing again, so current. Close the square bracket, close the square bracket. That's how you lock it. Okay, press enter. And now when I drag this across, okay, and I can double click on that to copy it down. Okay, it's locked it in. Okay, current, current. So that's the little trick. You've got to put the square bracket after the at, colon, and then reference it again with two square brackets on the end. Weird, hey? Yeah. Okay. All right. Same sort of thing. Let's say we want to do a sum ifs. So equals, well, let's just get a unique list first. So I'm going to go a unique list of departments. All right. And then I'm going to do a sum ifs. And there's actually a better way of doing this in a second. I'll show you now. Um, but let's sum this column. Okay. Where that column, I'm just pressing control space bar each time calls this, hash, press enter, great. Now I'm going to copy this formula across, but I always want to refer to $E19. Okay, so I always want to refer to that cell. And then when I copy it across, I don't want this department reference to change. So there's no at this time, but I just go square bracket for department. Okay, colon, open the bracket, department, two brackets on the end. All right, and then when I drag this across, this changes, but that is locked in. So there we go. A couple of little side notes. Um, let's say you filter something. Uh, so let's say I've, I don't want samples data anymore in there. So I'm just going to click on the drop down, untick Sam and click OK. Right, great. But what if you forget? Because that little filter icon is not very obvious. So what I have is this little icon on my toolbar. And when it's lit up, I know there's a filter somewhere on that table. That icon under the data menu, okay, is this one, the clear icon. You right click add it to your quick access toolbar. Okay, you may find that your quick access toolbar is um, above the ribbon. Okay, up here. I don't like it up there as much, especially for this purpose, because when you show it below the ribbon, you actually get the color and you can simply click on it. And when there's no filter, it's grayed out. Okay, which is great. But let me just put that back in, or let me just show you another way as well, sorry. How about this? How about a formula? Now I use autocorrect for doing all sorts of useful little formulas. You can use lambdas and stuff like this, but is filtered, okay, writes this formula for me, which I'll explain in, in one second. And all I need to do is double click on this and then highlight my table, okay, table sales two, and press enter. And that says no filter, okay. But if I filter for something, let's say I right click on the word operations, filter by the cell value, it now says filtered. Okay, so what's that formula? Now it looks a bit hard because I put let in there just to allow me to put this table name in once. But let me talk you through it. Basically, I'm using the aggregate function. Okay, so what is function number three? Well, it's simply a count A. All right, so it's counting how many records there are in this table, how many words, essentially. And then I'm checking if it matches how many words. The only difference being four, which is one option in this one, and five, which is an option in this one. So what's the difference? Well, four ignores nothing. Five ignores hidden rows. So if they match, it means there's no rows hidden. And if they don't match, it means there's rows hidden. And essentially, filtering is hiding rows. So if they match, the formula says no filter, and then I just used an emoji with that ticking, and another emoji if it's if they don't match. And then I copied the whole thing, okay? Control C, I went into File, Options, Proofing. Let me go in there now, 
file, options, proofing, autocorrect. And then I just went into this replace box, typed is filtered, they, you can see it is filtered, and just pasted in the with box. So whenever I need that little function, I can just type is filtered. So there you go, another little tip. All right, just talking about this one here, check this out, okay? I can just use the group by function these days. So group by uh, this column, okay? The values are gonna be these values. Oh, actually, let me just highlight these this way. Okay, comma, and then I wanna do a sum. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Puts the total in as well. And the last little tip is about drop-down lists. All right, so I want this to be a drop-down list. So I'm going to co copy this. I'm going to go onto this sheet. Um, click there. Control Shift V is the new shortcut for paste values. Control Shift V. Okay. Little tip: uh, if I just do Control T on this for a table. My table has headers isn't selected. However, if you make the heading bold and then Control T, so Control B, Control T, it then recognizes that that's different to the rest of things and that box is ticked. So it might save you a click. Um, okay, and then under the table design menu, I'm just going to say remove duplicates. Okay, so there's my little drop down list. And you can sort it as well. Great. What I'll also do is name my table. Last time in the other video, I showed you how to do this little name box here. If you, just to remind you, under table design, here's the table name box, right click, add to quick access toolbar. Okay, so in here, just to be proper, I'll call this uh, table depths for departments. And I often put that table name right here, just so I know. Okay, but if I want to refer to this as a drop-down list, I need to give it a name. So you'd go, I'd highlight these cells, go here, call it DD Depths. Right, great. I can now go back here, highlight all those values, data validation, list equals, you can press F3 or just type in DD depths, but F3, okay, DD depths. Perfect, everything's working really nicely. Until, until. Somebody's created a new page, nothing on it, okay? And then they can copy this page, control drag, which everything just works really nicely, okay? But then they do it one more time. And they get this warning. DD Dep already exists. What do you, do you say yes to all? You go yes. What does that? What's that? What have I just done? Well, under here, formula, name manager. Okay, we've now got a whole bunch of DD Deps. Okay, got three DD Deps. One scope to the workbook, and the others are scoped to these individual sheets. And then every time in the future you create a new sheet, you're going to get this warning and it gets really horrible, especially you've got multiple tables or multiple drop down lists. OK, and then you go no and it goes new name. Oh, it's just oh no. Uh, no again. And you close this. It's just yes, but I don't really know what's happening. Awful. OK, it's caused by making this table part of that name. Okay, so here's the trick. Let me go back in here. Formula, name manager, and I'll get rid of the ones that are problematic. Okay, I'm going to do it from scratch. What I do is this. I highlight one extra cell. Okay, call it DD list. Then I go formula, name manager. Okay, if you can remember, control F3. Okay. Here's DD list. It's referring to there. And then I just knock off one number off the end. So 
to the 8, okay, that then doesn't cause the issue. The data validation will should still work if I, I obviously, let me just show you, data, data validation, okay, or oh, DD list, sorry, I called it DD, that's why, DD list, okay, if I'd have called it DD depths, it would have worked, um, okay, so that's working, and when I add something new, okay, new, the table gets bigger, and the drop-down list also picks it up, which is great. And you don't get the horrible bug when you copy sheets. So there we go. Hope you find that useful. I'll put that little uh, no filters formula in the description if you want to copy that into autocorrect. I've got a couple of videos on autocorrect. A little link will pop up after this at the end videos to show you that autocorrect video. Um, hope you find this useful. Let me know what you think and I'll catch you in the next video. Before you go, check out one of my other videos or playlists and click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.